My PC is running really slowly. I just need to throw more RAM in there and it'll be better, right? It doesn't matter what frequency, what the timings are, whether or not I have my XMP profiles turned on, or if I have my dual channel mode activated or not, right? I just need to put as much RAM in there as physically possible, right? get started, let's go over the amount of RAM that you need in a PC. Now, generally, if you're gaming, 16 gigs is enough if all you're doing is gaming. Most people think that just adding more RAM in there is going to give them a lot more performance. And don't get me wrong, it certainly can, but if that's not the actual problem, is the amount of RAM that you have, then putting more in there isn't going to fix anything. Going from 16 to 32, you might see a difference. 32 to 64, it's going to be a lot more negligible. And 64 to 128, dude, you don't need that for gaming at all. You just don't. We can see that with this example here. So this is my PC that's running right now. As you can see, we're using 23.7 gigabytes of RAM, right? And I have 64 in this PC. Now, if I'm using 23.7 gigs and I upgrade to 128, I'm still only using 23.7 gigs. So I'm not going to notice any performance increase. It has enough RAM to do what I'm doing right now. 16 gigs of RAM has been the, pretty much the standard for about the past decade when it comes to gaming. But we are starting to see a few games that recommend 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now, honestly, the best thing I can say is if you're going to be building a PC, you should look into what games you're planning on playing and see what the recommended specs are for that game. So we're gonna consult this graph here that I found online about GTA 5 and different FPSs that they have. Now, all specs are the same. The only thing that's getting changed here is the RAM in terms of the frequency of the RAM. You can see it does affect the FPS that you get. The lower the frequency, the less FPS that you have. But something you need to bear in mind is the cost is going to increase whenever you're getting faster RAM like this. And on top of that, not every motherboard that supports 2400 megahertz is going to be able to support 3800 megahertz you're going to have to make sure that your motherboard supports it as well so that's just another thing that you're going to have to bear in mind now another huge thing to take into consideration when purchasing ram is going to be the ram timings it's always shown as four numbers for example you'll see like nine by nine by nine by 24 just as an example what this is is actually how many nanoseconds it takes for the ram to respond whenever something requests something from it so you need to look at RAM timing numbers in the same way that you look at score in golf. The lower the number, the better it is, the faster it is. All right, so now that we know about RAM timings and frequency and the amount that we need, we're going to use this formula here to calculate how much latency our RAM has. Now, if you're not super good at math, don't worry. We're living in 2023. The future is now. There is a calculator for everything. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. There's a website that all you have to do is plug the numbers in and it'll tell you what the latency of your RAM is. All right, so we're going to do an example problem for the class real quick. So up here, we can see that the frequency is 3200 on this set of RAM. I just picked some random stuff. Um, and now we're going to go down and look at the cast latency, which is 16. So we'll put 16 for the cast. We'll put 3200 for the megahertz. We'll calculate this 10 nanoseconds, which is actually pretty decent. Average is usually around 14. So hopefully that helps out. It gives you a little bit of a better understanding of what you need to be looking for whenever you are buying new RAM. If there's anything else that you would like me to go over, feel free to drop a question down in the comments below and I'll try to address it there. Or if it's a little bit more of an in-depth situation, I might make another video on that as well. Don't forget to drop into the Discord as well. You can get a lot of really, really good help in there as well as see some super awesome builds that everybody has posted. Here's some examples of some really cool builds that have been posted in the Discord. If you think that these are cool, want to check out some more, be sure to jump in there. Also, if you want, I would love to feature some more builds in these videos. So jump in there and post your post your builds and maybe that you'll be featured in one of these videos also i know that the date of posting this video isn't actually on a tuesday and it's supposed to be a tech tuesday but i'm trying out this new formula where i actually talk to the camera and maybe that helps some people out it's easier for me i don't have to find a lot of b-roll footage so let me know what you think of the new format if it's better if it's worse what i can do to improve i'd love to hear the feedback anyways see you guys later